We'll now take a look at what's new in 3D printing in SOLIDWORKS 2017. So here we have a model inside SOLIDWORKS that we'd like to get 3D printed. From Windows 8.1 and onwards, we now have the option within the file menu to print 3D. If we click on that, that will launch the Print 3D Property Manager. Now the first thing you need to do here is select your printer. So you can download 3D printer drivers and once you've done that, they'll appear in the drop down list here. Now when you select your 3D printer, what that will do is define the bed size that you can work within. The next thing you'll need to do is define where the bottom plane of the model is. So I'm just going to select this underside face just here. And at that point, we see a cube appear around the model, which represents our printable area. Now we can see at the moment the model is extending through the uh, printable volume area. So all I'm going to do here is use my orientation tools to reorient my, my model so it sits within the printable area. You also have the option here to orient to fit. There are also options within here to scale the model. Uh, again, you can scale this up and down, or you can choose scale to fit, which will fit the largest possible model within the printable area. You also have options within here to define your job quality and your infill percentage. Switching to the preview tab, we can show faces that require supports and we can show the model as transparent just to make those a bit clearer. So the green faces are support faces and the yellow faces uh, supports are not required. We also have the option to show striation lines. So if you're doing FDM printing, for example, the model is built up layer by layer and that will give us an understanding of how those layers are going to look. New to 2017, we have a thickness and gap analysis. So if we toggle that on, the next stage is to choose a material. So the materials that are available within this dropdown will allow you to define what the ideal wall thickness and material layer height is. Uh, this can be overridden if you like, but with, if you click on calculate, the orange arrows are showing us thin walls in the model and the blue arrows are showing us thin gaps in the model. I'll just adjust the thickness so we get a few less arrows so it's easier to see what's going on. So it's really nice to be able to, to have a look at these problematic areas because it'll allow you to pick up on these before you commit to printing. If we switch back to the settings tab, we have the option within here to save to file. So we could save to STL before, we now have a .3MF file type that we can save to. And providing you've got Windows 10, the .3MF file types will display with a, a thumbnail and it'll also carry through the colors with it. Once that's been saved out, you can obviously upload the model to your 3D printer or quite often now uh, you can send your model to various websites who will print it for you. So I've gone to a website called iMaterialize here. I've uploaded my 3D model so you can see it there. I can rotate it around and so on. And then I get a cost depending on the material um, that I have chosen to print it in. Again, being able to use a thickness and gap analysis it's a nice way to pick up on those potential problems with your print before you commit to printing it. So just to summarize, we can now also fit to build area. We can easily identify problem areas. We can specify custom values during this process. We can export to the .3MF format and Windows 10 supports thumbnails. Mm -hmm.